on the outside mm -hmm. of, of the teepee at the very top, it looks like there are some kind of animal hairs hanging That's out. horse hair up there. It's a what horse is tail. What is it's to recognize that the t it's a teepee of an important leader. If they're uh, like a distinguished leader or a, a mainly recognized as a leadership role, they will put something up the top of their pole. Well, and it doesn't that's necessarily have to be horse hair. No, sometimes sometime somebody might even put an animal skin up there, the full height of the animal up there, yeah. depending on how they're related to that animal. But generally, it's a horse tail that they put up there, and that's attached to, you can see that shield, the yellow and blue one. That pole there is what they call a lifting pole. It's the longest of the poles, and that's where that horse is sitting on. I, see, I noticed it was on the top. Yeah, it's on the longest one, and that's yeah. recognised, and that's a lifting pole. But you sometimes see other things on the other poles, some streamers, some cloth, but generally they just leave that one on the top. And then this, there's another one out here, a little bit of horse hair, yeah, with some buffalo. That's a door knocker. Because obviously, if, you know, if somebody's outside they, and you hear it tinkle, then, how? Oh, come on in. So it's exactly the same as we got, but we just got different things. Yeah? How did I get the poles and the all the way up there? Getting it into here, to this building, was real difficult. Because obviously the height. But other than that, before, you can start with three poles. There's one here and two at the back. Once you get those, what they call the tripod, then you lean all the rest against that. And then the cover attaches to that back one. You pull it through, and these sticks here, you just lace it together and then peg it down. Okay? Yeah, you can sit back there, you can sit on this side. You guys sit on this side too. Watch the camera though. You can sit over this side too. You can sit over this side. Here you go. Move right up to the top. Here's a thing for you. You guys go into a classroom to learn, don't you? Can you imagine this is the first original classroom for a Lakota boy or a girl? They're born in here and this is their classroom. You learn about everything around you right here. So you can say you've been sitting in an original Lakota classroom. This is where it all begins because this is where it starts. So you guys got any questions about the things in here? Yeah. How? All this I've made, everything you see in here I've made. And I've been doing it for over 40 years now. Since I was way, way small, as far as I can remember. Yeah. Is that like use for battle? You can use it either. Today, I use it for cutting wood for the fire. But way back, yeah, it would have been used in battle, whatever. These two, these ones down here, these are clubs make them put a stone head on then they get a piece of willow when it's fresh and they bend it over the top and then wet rawhide this is rawhide on the top here and it binds it in and then there's a loop on the bottom end for your hand then when you're in war this is what you're using so you can imagine riding on a horse and you've got your shield on your arm and this is on this is what you're fighting with and again it's no honor killing somebody you're not there to kill them. Anybody can kill somebody. There's no honor. What they got to do is they get in, they want to go like that and get out. They want to touch you. And that's counting coup. And that's the honorable thing to do. If you can get in and you touch him without him touching you, it's even more honor. And everybody's watching you. So it's no honor in killing somebody. And if you look behind you, you'll see there's something else there too, right here. Yeah. Hey, I got a rifle. I shot you. <laughs> this is a exact replica of the rifles the old Lakotas used to carry. <laughs> it's a replica. It can't fire. I don't carry any real guns. I don't have any. I don't believe in them. It's no good. You get this is a replica. The barrels blocks. So basically, it's exactly what I've got it for to show people exactly what they were like. These are the original way, everything. You can do everything with them, but you can't fire them. These are the guns that your relatives were carrying at the Battle of Little Bighorn against Custer's troops. Exactly. 
It's, a there's a, it's a, a historical record that Crazy Horse, the famous warrior, was carrying these, this exact type of rifle. It's what they call a Henry rifle. And what it is, is you've got 13 shots in here. Yeah, and the army could only use them, their rifles, would only take one at a time. So you can imagine the Lakota warriors riding down, 13 shots and the army guy was standing there just loading one. And this is what, one of the early repeating rifles. Be careful, it's heavy. Now you can see the difference when you see in the movies. You see all these movies they make and the guns and they just stay still. They're not firing anything, they're firing blanks. If you get the original of this and fire it, it recoils and it moves up and down. So you imagine on horseback trying to load and firing it, then you see how good the old warriors were. Okay? Uh, see how, how heavy it is? Now you imagine on horseback with it. You have to be strong, but you have to be agile with it because, and the horse has got to know what you're doing because you're using two hands. So sometimes the old warriors used to carry the, the rein in their teeth and put it in their teeth because the horse knew exactly from the movement of the legs what he had to do. And again, with a bow and arrow, you can't hold on to the rein, getting your arrow out of your quiver and loading it and firing it. You, the horse has to know what you're doing. So you and the horse are one. Okay, any more questions? Yeah. No, it's a powder horn. Before these type of rifles, they used to have a rifles that fired a, a lead ball, but they used black powder to ignite it. The powder used to be carried in those horns. Okay? How do you catch the, catch the foxes? With traps. traps. Yeah, you bait them and then bring them in. There's a way you can do it, find out if you've got foxes around your house. If you've got some sand, make a, an area about this big. Then you can put an egg in the middle of it. An ordinary egg. And what happens is the animal will come up and get the egg and he'll leave his footprint there and you can tell what animal's around. And a lot of time what they used to do is get a piece of wire with a little a stick on it and put it right by the egg. So as the animal goes to get the egg and put his head through, the trap springs. You can catch it and it, the, trap, the wire breaks its neck. So it doesn't harm the animal, doesn't harm the skin that you're after, it just kills the animal. And then what they would do was pray with it. Because it's a relative. So you pray and you say, sorry relative, that I had to kill you, but I needed you for this. It's the same if you go hunting today. In the old way, Lakota would go hunting and kill that animal, then you're going offering tobacco. And say, sorry relative, but my family were hungry, so I needed to kill you. I needed your meat because your meat is going to help my family survive. So can you remember that one? Okay, so you just don't kill something. There's no reason for it. You used everything, the bones, everything. So you don't just, like with a buffalo, you use every part of it because it's all different things.